Hello and welcome to our channel. It's Lois here from Lois and Morgana Davidson Art and today's another one of my favourite demos from our channel, this time uh, by the very talented Morgana and she'll be painting these two beautiful blue herons for you fishing in a wetland scene. If you'd like to see more of these amazing wildlife in watercolour bird studies and nature studies, then please follow the link below to Morgana's Patreon page. It features in-depth tutorials with downloadable um, line work and outlines for you and lots of um, beautiful photographs for you to paint royalty free. Hello everybody and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Morgana here today and in this video I'll be showing you how I painted this pair of handsome blue herons against a loose, simple background using watercolour. The first step is to draw out your heron shapes. Uh, to do this I searched the website www.petsales.com to find some great shapes that I wanted to paint from the bank of free use reference photographs they have there. I ended up with two photographs uh, that I just simply couldn't choose between. So um, I ended up deciding to create my own composition for this painting by including both silhouettes. I'm painting on a smooth hot press watercolour paper today from Saunders Waterford, size 28 by 38 centimetres, so nice and large to accommodate these uh, handsome and statuesque birds. And uh, once I got my shapes um, loosely sketched out in HB pencil and protected with some drawing gum, um, I am now covering the whole paper with some clean water to begin with to uh, create a nice washy loose background. And the first colour that I'm using here is some raw sienna, um, followed by a touch of Payne's grey. And you can see I'm using my large um, flat wash brush to just introduce this colour nice and quickly and to get some really interesting texture here, these nice horizontal sweeps of the brush, which is going to uh, work towards creating our loose landscape. Now I'm adding in some indigo as well uh, and just bringing it up towards the sky here uh, just to start creating um, a really sort of loose, washy, pale sky um, around the top of the paper uh, and trying to concentrate the richer colour down towards the bottom of the paper, which is of course going to create our landscape. I'm also uh, adding in some cerulean blue, you can see at the top of the paper here, uh, just to enhance the indigo. Um, I do think that cerulean blue and indigo are a wonderful combination of colours for a nice subtle sky when you want something that's bright but not too sort of overtly bright and summery. Now you can see I've got plenty of uh, water here on the paper which means I can keep adding in paint and it's going to uh, diffuse out and get these lovely soft edges. Um, so here you can see more Payne's Grey being added and a little bit of, um, I think that's some quite watered down burnt sienna beginning to go in there just to start creating a few interesting shapes. Here you can see I'm basically uh, marking out a really loose horizon line, just something to differentiate between the land and the sky. And this lower part of the painting I'm not going to touch at all now, I want to get those lovely soft colours all diffusing and softening together and that's actually going to be a riverbank so it's going to be some lovely loose water. Um, so here you can see I'm using the brush to add in some loose mark that is going to work as foliage along the edge of the riverbank. And this is really simple to do, all you need to do is take your mop brush, dry it off carefully, then pick up a little bit of paint and water, don't fully load or soak the brush, um, just use a bit of colour and you can dab it on, you can see it leaves these interesting sort of patterns and half marks in the, the areas that I'm concentrating on. You can see just building up colour to the left here, this is indigo incidentally that I'm adding now as well as some more burnt sienna. 
Now here you can see just adding a few more marks, uh, some fine lines with my small sword liner brush and I'm working wet and wet still which means that these lines uh, will stay there in the painting but they'll get a soft sort of slightly fuzzy edge which will make them appear to be very much uh, in the background of what we're painting. And if you get, like you see here, you can see I've got some excess water and paint pooling in this area of the paper where it's buckled slightly. Um, you can lift it out really carefully, but really simply. You can use a clean tissue like I'm doing here, just dab away at it lightly, or you could use uh, anything else absorbent such as a sponge or a cloth or some kitchen towel. Now the last little detail here before I leave it to dry is to add a sprinkling of salt across the wet paper. You can see I'm trying to be quite uh, specific about the areas that I put it in, concentrating mostly sort of around the birds and in the top part of the paper. And that's going to bloom out and create these interesting little shapes once it's dry. And you can see here the painting has dried um, really nicely. It's dried back um, a little paler then it went on like most watercolour does and so after brushing away the excess salt it's time to remove uh, the masking fluid from the birds. Uh, it's worth noting here that this is a really great simple technique you can use to paint well almost anything. Let me just show you quickly another painting I did using this technique. This is Flight done using the same methods, a pair of beautiful white egrets against a loose watercolour background. This uh, painting is actually available as a demo or tutorial on my Patreon page, which you can find by following the link in the description below the video if anybody would like to see that one too. Um, but for now, going back to our heron painting today, um, it's time to begin filling in these shapes that have been kept really nice and clean by the masking fluid. Now, as you can see here, um, when painting birds like this, I generally start with the head and the beak area, uh, just because these can be a little bit fiddly uh, and it feels great to get them done and out of the way first uh, because that's where I so often make mistakes. So I get these done first with my fine brush. You can see here that I'm using a combination of raw sienna with a little bit of burnt sienna as well for the beak and then transitioning into some Payne's gray for the darker detail on the bird's head. It is also worth noting that when you're using masking fluid in this manner, um, quite often if you've got any line drawing underneath, then when you remove the masking fluid, it will take up the pencil with it, so you will lose some of that detail. So if you do require that as a guideline when you're painting, um, it's just worth bearing in mind that you'll probably have to go back in and lightly draw a little of your detail again, um, just because that is the nature of drawing gum and masking fluid. You can see I'm still using the fine detail brush here, adding uh, some Payne's Grey to the bird's head and circling quite carefully around the area that I've marked out for the eye, leaving a little white space. I'm going to come back and fill that in later. All I needed to do here was just make sure I left that white area clean to paint over once I've got the rest of the bird done. Um, but if you do happen to smudge or uh, go over the eye by accident, and trust me, I have done that before, then as long as you know where you want to put it, that is easily remedied by putting in a little bit of an opaque white over the top, so um, a touch of white gouache or something like that will bring that right back. So at this point you can see that I'm just moving the colour down following that sort of uh, S-shaped uh, neck of the bird and bringing the Payne's Grey down towards the, uh, the body, this larger section here. And uh, I'm just using at the moment a small round brush um, to just move the colour around and plenty of water. I'm adding water to sections as I go and then painting wet and wet within them just to maintain some really nice uh, soft edges uh, within this section here. And you can see I've switched just quickly to a smaller brush, 
this is my size small uh, sword liner brush to just add a few extra details such as these dark sort of long uh, extra feathers that you often see at the front of the bird on their sort of neck and chest area uh, before just moving on to uh, filling in now the uh, pale grey underside and I'm going quite carefully here with my small brush because I'm just going around some of the details such as these legs here and of course we've got uh, on the top sort of the top left area we've got the folded over wing so I'm being quite careful to paint around that for now as well To begin with, I'm keeping this colour quite light uh, because it's always, I find, easier to darken down certain areas that you want to add more shadow into than it is to uh, uh, easily lighten them up. Um, so I am now adding a little bit more dark paint now that I've uh, basically got the colour filled in uh, and I know where I need to add the darks now. So just starting to bring the colour down and into this lower wing. You can see here that the water is our friend. I'm using clean water from my pot to just draw down the grey into the wing to begin with, uh, getting those shapes established firstly, those long lovely pin feathers that you get and these enormous great big wings uh, of the heron. And for this I'm still using uh, Payne's grey as you can see here but I'm adding a splash of ultramarine into the mix as well because these are of course the fabulous uh, great blue herons so it would seem uh, rather a crime not to include a little blue into his fabulous plumage as well. Now whilst I was researching these fabulous birds to bring them into this painting I discovered something quite interesting. The oldest recorded great blue heron was found in Texas in the US and uh, it was recorded to be at least 24 years old which I think is absolutely marvellous. Um, for me personally I think I never really sort of realised or associated these birds with having such a uh, such wonderful long lifespans, but uh, there we go, I guess you learn something new every day. At this point in the painting you can see that I'm beginning to build up more shadows here, um, basically along the belly of the bird, making sure that the shadows move across the underside of the wing, uh, but also transfer across into the bend of the neck as well. It's a bit of a slow old process at times, but um, it is worth taking this step slowly and just building up your colour um, according to the reference photographs. It does help to have them handy uh, and just following the areas where naturally the shadows would fall uh, and making sure they are just a bit darker and then uh, making sure that everything else is just a bit lighter. And that's the reason really why I have stuck with mostly Payne's Grey for this, uh, for this bird. It's such a wonderfully versatile colour and you can get so many different uh, variations or tones within it from absolutely really light pale misty colour to of course that ferociously dark almost black colour that it comes out of the pan or out of the tube uh, in. Which you can see that I'm actually using now with my liner brush to get the um, dark detail here over the uh, heron's head um, and get some fine lines into these long neck feathers. And after taking a short tea break and allowing everything I've painted so far to fully dry, I'm coming back in with a little bit more dark colour this is Payne's Grey with Indigo to add some more darks into the wings. And I'm going to repeat this process in this sort of pale area on the upper wing as well, just uh, building up that dark colour over the pale grey. You can see uh, it's really simple and really effective. But now it's time to uh, take on the eye detail and I'm using my smallest brush and beginning with a little bit of lemon yellow. Next, deepening this colour here with a tiny dab of raw sienna to add some more intensity. 
Now once that's dry, and you do need to make sure that that's dry, um, I'm using black to add a very small delicate round pupil in that eye and just a little nostril here on the beak as well. Those are fiddly little details. I tend to wait and do them until I'm feeling brave enough, um, hence the tea break. But now you can see that heron is done. I'm so pleased with how he looked, those colossal wings just spreading out there. So uh, it's time to paint heron number two using exactly the same techniques as I've just shown you. As you can see, bird number two here is in a rather different pose, but his colours are the same, and so therefore the method of painting is basically the same here as well. I'm just showing you this last majestic wing. We've got Payne's grey and a little ultramarine going in here. Uh, you can see the small round brush again, perfect for just adding this loose feather detail in wet in wet, and just getting those lovely soft blended edges. Again, this is a time-consuming part of the process. Um, it's the thing that takes the most time, really, because as you've seen, painting the background was really lovely and quick compared to this, but I do think it's worth it. I also do find it very enjoyable. So here, just to show you in a little more detail, um, I'm just carefully painting the uh, fish in uh, just grey with a little bit of white gouache our triumphant hunter with his catch. <laughs> of course you can paint the fish any colour you like, any colour that complements your background and your birds. Uh, and now just coming in again with a fine detail brush to add a little bit of extra body and detail into these long uh, neck and chest feathers which you get on the great blue heron. And of course any small size brush will work really well for this. Um, I'll pop the name of the brush that I'm using down in the video description for anybody um, who's interested, but really as long as you've got a brush that comes to a nice sharp point that you can get these nice fine lines with, um, that isn't going to uh, blot or leave uh, splots of paint everywhere, then that's, uh, that's all that matters. So now the herons are done and I'm so happy with how they've come out, it's time to just add a little bit of extra detail to finish this painting off. So to bring the landscape together, um, at this point I'm using my sword liner again to just draw up these um, tall sort of spiky reeds and rushes along this, uh, this river bank. So to emphasise this, um, I'm leaving the lower part of the painting completely untouched. We've got that nice soft sort of wet and wet diffusion of colour there which is uh, working beautifully as the water. And of course we've got the sky above, so it's these sort of lovely loose marks here um, in the centre of the painting that I'm just emphasising with the liner brush uh, and just turning this into a riverbank by just adding these clusters of reeds and rushes around the birds. And you can see here I'm being quite careful to just paint around the bird because of course the reed is in the background, we don't want it going over the tip of his beak. But if you do, then don't worry, you can just blot out the mark with a bit of clean tissue and carry on. On top of that, I'm going to use my um, tree and texture brush to just add a little bit of extra dark foliage along this area here. This is just a little bit of burnt sienna going in mixed with a touch of indigo. And as you can see, it's just really simple. Any brush will do really, just blotting in a little bit of extra dark colour. And then voila, the painting is finished. So thank you everybody so much for watching along with me today. I had an absolute blast painting these beautiful and majestic birds. So I really hope you guys all enjoyed the video too. I do have a real fondness for these kind of tall and beautiful water birds and don't forget you can hop over to my Patreon page following the link in the description of this video to uh, watch its companion piece being painted, this lovely pair of white egrets against a green and yellow sunny backdrop. But that's all from me for now. A huge thank you to all of you who've already visited my Patreon page and signed up there. It's fantastic to have you and uh, a very warm welcome. 
Uh, but that is all from me in this video, so I will bid you farewell and wish you a wonderful rest of the day and very happy painting.